By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a match between me, myself and I. I am playing with a poison deck, black and green. I'm looking forward to it. I always want to break poison. I'm not there yet though, but still, this deck's pretty cool. And I'm taking on Yoop, and Yoop is playing with a pink weenie deck. So really traditional pink weenie deck. Savannah Lines, Iron Claw Orcs, Bolt, Chain Lightnings. I believe there are even some Juggernauts in there. So it's just it's just nuts. So it's going to go really, really fast. So I'm going to try to battle that with my poison strategy. Now, before I start with the deck decks, I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to skip that section. I know some people enjoy going to the match first, look at the deck text later. Now, the easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there. It'll take you straight to the games. And as for now, we are going to start with the deck tech of my opponent, Joop. Let's take a look at his pink weenie brew. And here we see the deck of my opponent. Well, actually, we see a few cards of the deck of my opponent because they don't have a deck photo, unfortunately. But I mean, the idea of these type of decks are pretty similar, right? Uh, Pink Weenie really works on playing a lot of cheap creatures really quickly, like Savannah Lines, like White Knight, like Iron Claw Orc, like Granite Gargoyle, who's also on the, uh, in this list. Juggernaut is kind of the top end. Sometimes you also play a few Sarah Angels, but it depends on how aggressive you want to play and how much mana you want to use. Now, usually these decks are combined with Armageddon, but my opponent has decided to go with Stone Rain instead of Armageddon. He's also playing with four Chain Lightnings and four Lightning Bolts. So this deck is actually pretty ruthless and it's going to go really, really fast. So I'm a little bit um, nervous taking on this deck. The reason for that is that my strategy is really heavy on land destruction and I want to win with my poison creatures. Now my poison creatures are all pretty small, right? It's a 1-1 one, one, and a 1-2. So they're both boltable and chain lightning uh, bowl, I guess. Chain lightning a bowl, can you say that? Anyway, uh, my point here is that my opponent only needs one or two lands to kind of get his deck going and also kill my creatures at the same time. So yeah, this is really going to be a rough matchup for me. But hey, there's always a chance and I'm going to try and, you know, go poison. Talking about that, let's take a look at my poison deck. And here we see my poison deck. So backwater poison, it's been on the channel a few times. I just love to play it, um, it because it's just so much fun to try to crack the poison code in old school, right? There are two poison creatures. Uh, Pit Scorpion and Marsh Viper. Those are the two creatures and they give and damage and poison counters. So if your opponent has 10 poison counters, your opponent is dead. Now the Marsh Viper gives two poison counters, makes making it really, really good and important in this deck. The Pit Scorpion, unfortunately, only gives one poison counter. But still, you know, when you put them together, hopefully I can kill my opponent by poison counters. If the game happens to, you know, go into the long game, which I really don't want, I'm probably going to die if that's the case. But then I've got a Serpent Generator to kind of back me up that can make 1-1 one, one Snake Tokens that leave Poison Counters as well. So that's pretty cool, you know, if the game goes to that phase. But like I said, I want the game to go fast and I want the game to finish well, I wouldn't say early, but, you know, I need that early pressure to put the first poison counters on. And um, I want to do that by, I want to accomplish that by, of course, ramping up with Elves of Deep Shadows, the Moxon, and the Soul Ring. Um, and at the same time, I want to keep the land count of my opponent as low as possible by using the Ice Storms. I've got four of those and the Sinkholes. I've got four of those as well. I'm also playing three Crumbles main to kind of target those uh, those Moxen of my opponent and maybe the Felwer Stones of my opponent, just trying to keep him really low on mana and keep attacking with my Poison Creatures. And then if he's able to play out a creature, I'm going to use my Paralyze on those to tap them down. And then my opponent is probably already low on mana, has to make a difficult position or put all the mana into untapping this one creature. Or, you know, maybe he doesn't even have four to untap it or play something out. But either way, it's going to be difficult for him. And of course, when you're trying to keep your opponent low on mana, it works really well with the Hypnotic Spectre. Because if your opponent has no lands, he cannot play anything out. He probably has a full hand. And then that's where the Spectre comes in. So the Spectre starts attacking. My opponent has to discard the cards. That's kind of the dream scenario, right? Now, in reality, what's going to happen most of the time is that I first play out my Spectre, which will probably get bolted or swords or Spectres always die immediately. But that's fine because they're kind of my lightning rods in this deck. And then after that, I can play my poison creatures and try to kill my opponent on poison. Now, there is a little uh, side note here because just with the deck of my opponent who's made some changes, I've made some changes as well and I've made the changes in the sideboard. I've put in two extra glooms. I'm playing with three gloom in the sideboard. So don't be surprised if you uh, see more glooms than one 
in this match. Okay, so I just wanted to inform you. I actually don't quite know what I took out. So I will have to check that for you. I believe I took out the Abomination, even though the Abomination is uber cool. And I think I also took out the Meek Stones. Because usually when I play against um, a creature heavy deck, I board in my Terrors anyway. So I didn't really need the Meek Stones, I found out while I was playing. Even though it's still, I guess it's still a good strategy, also with the Paralyzes. But somehow the Meek Stones don't really seem to work that well for me in this specific deck. Anyway, this is uh, my list. We've looked at the list of my opponent. That means we're ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So my opponent on the left here playing with the pink weenie deck and I'm on the right playing with my poison deck, black and green. Let's see what's, uh, what's gonna happen. Like I said, I think uh, my opponent is a favorite here with his type of deck, but who knows if it's my day, Put some poison counters on if I can play land destruction quickly. Ramp up. Everything's possible. So it looks like my opponent here has taken a mulligan. So that's a good sign for me. Let's see what I'm going to do. Playing a swamp here and passing the turn. Six cards in hand. So that's a die there. That's indicating the amount of cards in hand. And that my opponent, of, of course, after the draw, also on seven cards, playing a plane. So now he should be on six cards in hand. Passing the turn. There's a mox jet. And tapping two. Okay, there's a sinkhole, so that's pretty good. But I am missing a land drop, though. So it looks like I kept a hand with a swamp and a mox jet and probably a sinkhole, maybe multiple. And uh, choosing to go for that strategy also because, uh, well, I was on the play, actually, not on the draw. So I'm a little bit surprised that I kept this hand. Look at this sinkhole. Oh, that's painful. So it was a risky strategy, and that's, uh, now it's proven why I shouldn't have kept the hand. So only a mox jet left for me. We're in top decking mode right now. It looks like my opponent here is also uh, missing a land drop. Yes, he is passing the turn back to me. So we're both just top decking at the moment, trying to find lands. And now I've got a discard. So discarding a knowledge vault. There is a mountain. And he can do a lot with two mana. Here we go. Iron Claw Orcs 2-2. Two, two. That's kind of a nightmare scenario for me. Tapping the jet. Okay, playing a Paralyze on the Iron Claw Orc. So at least it's going to slow my opponent down a little. But I really need Lance. And I'm going to, I know I've said it again, but I'm going to say it another time. I shouldn't have kept this hand. This was, this was a bad decision. I was probably tempted because of the sinkhole and I've probably got some Paralyzes in hand. But if he now shatters or disenchants my Mox Jet, I mean, I've got no Lance anymore. So passing the turn here back to my opponent. And I'm really jealous at his two lands. And he's going to tap both of his lands. And there's a disenchant. Yeah, this is the nightmare scenario. So this game won. Just because of a bad decision. is kind of ruined here from the start almost. So eight cards in hand. Now I've got to make a tough decision again. At least I'm still on 20, which is something. So checking my hand here, discarding a crumble and passing the turn. So what a weird game one here, because I mean, my opponent's also quite low on lands, only having two lands, but for his deck, that's pretty good. Passing the turn now. Let's see if I can find some lands, discarding another card again, a crumble. There is a Hammerheim tapping it out here. There's a Granite Gargoyle 2-2 two, two flying. And for one red, you can give it plus one, plus O. Oh. Sorry, a plus O, oh, plus one. It's the other way around. Okay, there's another Paralyze. <laughs> oh, this is really funny. So I think what I said about my hand is true. I probably had Swamp, Mox Jet, uh, two Paralyzes, a Sinkhole, and maybe a Crumble or something. And it was like, well, you know, with the sinkhole, I can destroy a land. With all the paralysis, I can kind of control the board, which is actually happening. The problem here is that I didn't draw into any other land. And of course, that my opponent also played a sinkhole. And now there's a stone rain. Sorry, he, he didn't play a sinkhole, by the way, of course. He played a strip mine. And now there's a stone rain taking care of my other land. The bayou is gone as well. This is, this is really bad. I mean, this match so far has been a feel bad all the way. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Juggernaut. Okay, at least I'm going to die in like four turns. Also remember, I discarded all my crumbles, right? So there's one crumble left in the deck. At least I found a land from the top of the library playing a forest here. Passing turn. 
Oh man, that juggernaut's gonna hurt. I mean, at least it's a beautiful beta juggernaut, so I can't complain. Bring it on. Remember, juggernaut has to attack every turn. It's a 5-3 creature for four mana. Oh, look at this, another stone rain. So he's drawing into all his stone rains here. And I mean, that's just so, so painful. Drawing my card for turn. Oh, he's also playing a chain lightning on my life total. Okay, so I'm was a little bit eager to draw to draw cards because I was hoping to draw lands. I am actually finding lands, but now the problem is that my opponent keeps destroying them. So hopefully this forest can stick to the board. And he's gonna attack now, putting me on seven. Oh my god, more direct damage. Gonna go to four. So I've got one more measly turn or not. Going to one. Are you kidding me? Am I already toast? Yeah. Oh, this is a nice ending here with Fireball for one. Like it all fitted together. <laughs> that is kind of funny. I was expecting another Chain Lightning or Bolt, but that didn't happen. Anyway, yeah, this, this game wasn't very good. We're going to dive into our sideboards and hopefully I can give you a decent game in game uh, number two. Game number two, here we go. Let's see what I can do. Drawing my seven. Hopefully I'm gonna keep a, land, a hand with Lance. That's my advice. Okay, starting here with an Elves of Deep Shadow. That is pretty good. Passing to turn. Let's see what my opponent can do. There's a Plains passing. There, am I gonna play an Ice Storm here or a Sinkhole? Actually, I'm not. I'm attacking for one, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Usually, what I want to do here at turn two is play some land removal. There's a white knight. Ay, ay, ay. That is bad. 2-2, two, two, first strike, pro black. And that's really bad. It means I cannot play a terror. That's probably come, came in from the sideboard. Also, I cannot play a paralyze on it. So that is kind of tough. It's actually really hard for my deck to get rid of it, now that I think about it. Anyway, tapping four mana. I'm going to go to 19 here because of the Elves of Deep Shadow. Playing a Marsh Viper, so a 1-2 creature from the dark. And when it deals damage, it uh, also gives my opponent two poison counters. So hopefully I can get it to stick. There is an, a Mountain. And a Granite Gargoyle, a 2-2 Flyer. And for one red, you can give it plus 0, plus 1. Yeah, it's looking pretty bad for me here. There's the attack with the White Knight dropping to 17. I mean, at least I've got Lance this turn. Uh, I mean, this game, but... Just not looking great. There's a Bayou. Okay, tapping two. There's a Terror though. Taking care of the Gargoyle. That does mean I can put some poison counters on my opponent. Attacking here. So he's gonna take a damage. And he's gonna take two poison counters. You see those little skulls there? On my playmat, they indicate the poison counters that I've given to my opponent. So he's got two poison counters. Only eight more to go. And look at that, taking another damage, tapping three. What am I going to do? There's a Hypnotic Spectre. That's actually kind of nice. I hope my opponent doesn't have a Lightning Bolt or something. Because it would be really sweet to swing in with Hypnotic Spectre. There is another Plateau. Let's wait and see what he can do. Tapping four. There's a Juggernaut, but no Lightning Bolt, so at least I can swing in with the Hypnotic Spectre. Of course, there's a little problem. We still have the Knight, and now we also have that Juggernaut. That's looking pretty fierce. So I'm going to untap. Let's hope I've got a Crumble. Playing a Swamp, tapping a Green, hopefully for a Crumble. Yes, Crumbling here, the Juggernaut. So he's going to gain five life, though, but that doesn't matter. I want to win on Poison anyway. And now the roads open again to attack with my Viper. Oh, this is so sweet. So I'm going to put two more poison counters on him and I'm going to force him to discard a card. That is pretty neat. The deck is kind of working and that makes me pretty, pretty happy. So four poison counters now for my opponent and he's losing a card. This is ideal. It feels like Christmas. Let's see which one am I going to pick. That one, I guess. That's a disenchant. Doesn't matter much at the moment, but hey, card is a card. Only one card in hand for me though, and passing the turn now back to my opponent. 
And he's drawing a card for turn. Let's see what he can do. I mean, maybe if he gets a fifth land, I wonder if he plays with Sarah Angels. I'm quite sure he plays with like a one-off or something. Here's the Savannah Lions. Not too worried about that. And an Iron Claw Orc. So I wonder if he's going to attack. Probably not. Now, this is a little problematic for me. Oh, he is going to attack. Okay. So he's going to put me on 12. I can at least fly over again with Hypnotic Spectre, force him to discard the last card. Let's hope it's not a Lightning Bolt. Taking the damage here, it's going to lose the last card in hand, which is a Strip Mine. I'm going to tap four here, it seems. Another Marsh Viper? Interesting. The problem here is that White Knight, of course, well, and all the other creatures. I need to kind of clear a path <laughs> for my poison creatures. I got to laugh. I mean, my strategy is, is oh, it's just pretty bad. At least I got the Hypnotic Spectre still to fly over Yoop's creatures and I guess just force him to keep discarding the cards he's got. Attacking here with Iron Claw Orcs and with the White Knight. So that means four more damage unless I block. Ooh, look at this. I'm going to block something. It looks like I'm going to block here the White Knight on Marsh Viper, Marsh Viper, and the uh, Elf. So he can choose. Yeah, putting the two damage on the Marsh Viper. And I'm going to drop here to 10. Oh, there's a Juggernaut. There is a Juggernaut. That is really good. Can I do something against the Juggernaut here? Playing another Elves of Deep Shadow. Attacking him for two. I'm not... I wonder, maybe it's better to keep the Hippie on blocking duty. That may sound weird, but I could double block, maybe if not expect your Elves of Deep Shadow kill the Juggernaut. I think maybe that's better. I guess my strategy now is just to put a uh, Elves of Deep Shadow in front uh, of the Juggernaut, in front of the bus. Which is unfortunate, of course. But, I mean, I cannot take five damage, right, from the Juggernaut. I mean, that would be kind of suicide. Look at that! Oh, a fireball! Oh, this is really bad! Killing my two elves? Oh, this is really bad. Is this the end? There's the... He's attacking with everything here. Wow. Is that maybe a crumble? Okay, there's a terror. Okay, so at least I can stop the bleeding a little bit. Playing it on the Iron Claw Orcs here. Taking seven, though. Oh, should I do that? Should I block here maybe the... No, I don't want to give up my Viper. Oh, because I want to keep putting poison on my opponent. But it's looking very dire here. I can untap, of course, Hypnotic. Oh, my goodness. One card in hand. Attacking for one year, so that's six poison counters. I mean, I am getting closer. Problem is, I'm almost dead. <laughs> I'm on three. That feels like I'm playing with Borrow Time against an aggro deck like Yoops. He's going to draw his card for turn. There's the double attack. Okay, there's a Crumble. This is fantastic. Playing the Crumble. Blocking the Lion. Which looks like a bad trade, but when you're on three, you're willing to make that trade. Let's hope this is not direct damage in hand of my opponent here. Okay, it's a planes. Good news. Maybe I'm lucky. Maybe it's going to have a huge land pocket and I can just swing and I only need two more turns. Okay, there's the first one. Going to go to eight poison. Keeping my fingers crossed here. One more turn. One more turn. One more turn. Oh, what is he going to do? He's got eight poison. Yes, a Hammerheim. And his hand's empty. So I'm winning it here. Well, not well, not winning yet, but I'm tying it here. It's 1-1 one, one here in game number two. This is amazing. This is amazing. Let's see me finish it. Tapping it. Ten poison, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, I'm loving it. This is why I love playing this deck. Even looking back at these matches, I just enjoy it so much you know when it works it doesn't work a lot but when it does 
it's very satisfying. Anyway, we're gonna shuffle up and we're gonna go to a old decisive game number three. Look at that, by the way, that lightning bolt was right there. Game number three, here we go. It's 1-1, one, one, the decisive game. I'm on the start here, that surprises me, with a swamp passing to turn. There's a planes into a soul ring. Ooh, he's ramping up. I don't want to see this. Okay, there's a Bayou sinkhole. Okay, sinkhole, that's good. Crumble would have been even better, but at least we're not going to see a juggernaut now. I was a little bit afraid of that, like five power turn two. That would be an absolute killer. There's a Savannah Lines here. Turn number two, two one creature, vanilla hitting the board. And let's see what I can do. Hopefully I've got a land, right? Looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here. Tapping two, not playing a land, sinkhole on the plateau. Do I have mana issues again? Okay, I don't. Good. I was worried for a moment there. Playing a forest, passing to turn. Took so long before I played out that land. Okay, there's a, a granite gargoyle again. We've seen quite a few of those in this matchup. And he's going to attack with the lion, so I'm going to drop to 18. Four cards in hand. There's a strip mine. So I've got a lot of land destruction. The problem is, of course, my opponent has a pretty low mana curve. So despite the fact that I keep destroying his lands, he's really capable of playing out threats. Here's an Hypnotic Spectre. Now, at least my opponent doesn't have the red to pump the gargoyle. Okay, there's the red again in the form of Plateau. Lightning Bolt. Okay, Hypnotic Spectre completely gone. Probably going to take four damage here. Drop to 14. Exactly. That is what's happening here. And this is not looking great. I need a terror to get rid of one, uh, get rid of at least one of the two creatures. Tapping three here. There's an ice storm. So I'm finding a lot of land removal, but it's just not as efficient here against uh, the deck of Yoop, the pink weenie deck. Very low curve. Gonna attack with both, offering me the trades. So I'm gonna take the trade here for the lines. Gonna take two more damage. And this is understandable by my opponent. He just wants to keep full pressure on. There is a forest tapping to Demonic Tutor. I wonder what I'm going to look up. Maybe a Terror. It kind of feels bad to look up such a card, you know, because it's just a one for one and you want to kind of, kind of more value for your Tutor. Another option is, I think, like a Sylvan Library, perhaps. And then hope for the best when I draw, look at the three cards. On the other hand, I'm already on 12. So if I would take two damage from the Gargoyle, I'll go to 10. Then take an extra four, we'll go to six. Uh, it's very risky. Yeah, this is tough, you know. This is where you kind of want to have an Ancestral Recall in green or black, where you can just draw three cards at this point. I don't have really anything valuable that I could look up, if you know what I mean by that. You know, I, I no value engine. Of course, I can find a card that destroys the gargoyle, but that's just going to be a one for one. I could look up an Hypnotic Spectre. I've got enough mana as well to play the Hippie out, but that's kind of risky, right? Because I'm probably going to trade it for the gargoyle then anyway. And if he's got a bolt or a chain, I'm going to lose it. Let's see what I looked up. Okay, so I did find a Sylvan here. Mm, not, it's risky. I understand why I did it. But maybe I should have just looked up a Terror and, and just played it on the Gargoyle and, you know, hope for the best. Which is in a way what I'm doing right now as well. I'm going to look at the top three in a moment. Let's first see if my opponent can play anything else out. There's a Strip Mine tapping four. Oh, okay, no Juggernaut. For a moment, I was worried. But this is the Knowledge Vault, so card from Legends. I'm playing with one as well. You uh, saw that, I believe, in game one where I had to discard it. It's a pretty cool card. Two and tap and put the top card of your library under the Knowledge Vault. And at any time, you can sack the Knowledge Vault and then you get all the cards under the Knowledge Vault. But you do have to discard your hand. Look at this. More land removal. And I got to sigh a little bit here because it means I haven't found a solution for the Gargoyle. Am I just really going to die to the Gargoyle because I looked up the Sylvan instead of creature removal? Oh, man. This is even worse. 
an iron claw orc. Oh man, and here it really shows that land removal can be a super good strategy, but against specific decks like, you know, decks with a low mana curve, uh, you know, that only play two colors or even less, it's just not that, that useful. Okay, finding a terror here, finally. But uh, now we've got the Iron Claw Orc to deal with as well. So um, there we see Yoop activating his Knowledge Fold, by the way, which is quite nice because he's low on cards in hand, so... Attacking here with the Iron Claw Orc, putting me on six, activating the Volt again, two cards under it. And passing to turn here, so I'm going to look at three cards again. Playing a Pit Scorpion. It's a 1-1, one, one. I wish it was a 2-1. I mean, it's three mana, can it not be a 2-1 for three mana? Come on, Watsy. Oh my goodness, this is not going well for me. Attacking here with the 2-2, two, two, dropping to 4. Paralyze would be nice. Although he can untap, he's got 4 mana, but still. There's a sinkhole. I'm just drawing all my land removal. This is just really starting to annoy me. Okay, at least I'm able to put a poison counter on him. I mean, now I can lose in peace because I've put a poison counter on him. And I will always have that game number two, but still. Uh, he's going to swing in. I'm going to go to two. Am I really going to die to an Iron Claw Orc? Or is it over already? Is there going to be a bolt now? I mean, he, what he could do here is sack the Knowledge Vault. You know, and see if he can find a bolt. There's a Mox Jet. So it's, yeah, it's really not working. Now I have to keep... The Pit Scorpion untapped. And look at how many cards are under that Knowledge Vault. It's quite nice to see the Vault in action, by the way. It's a card that doesn't see a lot of play. There's an attack for two, so now I have to block on the Pit Scorpion. Oh, this, this hurts. This really hurts. There's a Gargoyle. And a pass. He's not even using the Vault here. Yeah, this is not gonna gonna work. Playing the Elves of Deep Shadow, and that's game for my opponent here. Yeah, he even had two Northern Paladins in hand. That's really sweet from the sideboard. Couldn't cast them, though. And now he's gonna check what he had under the Vault. Come on, you gotta show us. He's not showing us that bad. I, I did see a White Knight there, but nothing else. Looking at the rest of the cards. Anyway, uh, this was the match for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm not sure if I did. Well, I loved that game number two, but I was pretty much annoyed with myself for keeping that hand in game one. And I do think overall, though, the best deck won. Pink Weenie is just better. And like you could, as you can see in game three, land removal doesn't work against these type of decks. Anyway, congratulations to Yoop for winning this matchup. And um, before we go, I'd like to thank you for watching another episode right here. Please take a moment to like, share, and comment on this video. All these things are completely free and really help the channel move forward. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and or do whatever. But please do to show YouTube that you appreciate the content that I make. Talking about that, I also have my very own Patreon program on patreon.com slash timmytalks. And I'm mentioning this because this is the way that you can become a patron of the show and support Timmy Talks financially. So if you enjoy what I'm doing and you want to help me to continue doing what I'm doing, please consider becoming a patron. It already starts for $1 a month. And for that $1, you actually get quite a lot back. You get access to the Timmy Talks Discord server and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one, and we'll go there in a minute. But I just want to mention that also you can join the Timmy Talks online events. Every couple of months, I organize an online tournament. And of course, when you're a patron, you can join in those tournaments. So if you're interested, please take a moment to check out my Patreon program. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. For now, we are going to go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Jesumba Kazi.